Yeah. It looks okay. Light's too bright. So, whatever. Need a logo on a budget? Well, Krita has your answer. Create a clean and professional logo in this free software for absolutely nothing. So you've heard me drone on all about Krita and stuff like that and how useful it is and the Photoshop alternative or option or something of that effect. But um, something I really haven't done a whole lot of um, is just logo design. So uh, in today's video, we're gonna take another look at Krita and see how well it can use for you for creating a logo. Let's get into it. So why Krita for logo design? Well, first off, Krita is free and open source. You don't necessarily need to spend a dime to be able to use it. It has all the basic tools for creating vector images as well as tools to manipulate those images. Depending on your platform, whether Windows, Mac, or Linux, a standard install of Krita will usually come with GMIQT, which is a add-on that can generate complex images, not through AI quite yet, but you can do a whole lot of things with it because it comes with a whole lot of presets and stuff like that that can help you create more complex images out of general products. And it also works really well with the layers you have it on too. Krita also comes with a variety of brush presets, but more can also be added on to expand your toolkit. And lastly, Krita is very user-friendly because it does not have a whole lot of uh, quirks, stuff like that, or complex keyboard shortcuts that you're gonna need to learn to be able to use the software fully. There are some, but most of what you're going to be doing is probably going to be through the mouse anyway. So we are here in uh, Krita, and uh, Krita is really designed with digital art in mind. Um, so as, as such, if we go to create a new image, we have a bunch of animation templates, comic templates, design templates, uh, stuff from DSLR cameras. But for the purpose of this video, we're going to create a, a document that is 1920 by 1080 pixels with a resolution of about 300 dpi. That doesn't really matter as much as I had mentioned it. And also because this is a logo, the overall size of the document does not matter. It just needs to be big enough that when we blow it up on certain objects, uh, the image doesn't become low resolution at that point. So it needs to kind of be like a higher resolution just to make sure that when we blow it up, it doesn't get you know grainy and stuff like that. So when you open up a new document and create it, it will create a very standard workspace for you to work in. Uh, most people tend to use this kind of workspace. I personally use it, um, but some people like to use um, workspace geared towards what they're specifically doing, like animation, brushing, and drawing, and stuff like that. And Krita does have some spaces for that. If you go to um, Window, go to Workspace, you have a few to choose from. We're going to stay here in the default workspace, though. And when you create a new do a project, let me do that. When you create a new project, it will create automatically two layers, a paint layer and a background layer. This background layer is locked by default, but if you click the block button on the layer itself, that will unlock it and that will allow you to edit it. Um, but for this purpose, we're actually gonna hide that background layer. For better or for worse, Krita only has two tools for creating basic shapes, a rectangle tool and a circle tool. There is also the polygon tool, um, which um, allows you to make multiple points to create a polygon shape but that's not really much of a basic shape as it is just a way to create a more complex shape using a tool that sounds like a uh, for the adventurous you can also use the bezier curve tour to tour you can go the bezier tour how do you say tour and not tool for the adventurous you can use the bezier curve tool which will allow you to create uh, shapes in a way that the polygon tool does Except I think really the only difference is that it creates these uh, more visible nodes that kind of make it a little easier to create those shapes because you know where they're connecting. It's really the same thing though. Create it uses a by the layer workflow. So when you create an object on a layer, it is bound to that layer. And it can only and you can only manipulate that shape when you select the layer that it is bound to. Now this has some pros and cons. Now, if the pros is that it can also kind of help you make it a little easier to organize different objects because Krita because Cre is designed for digital drawing. And usually, a digital op uh, usually, usually a digital image will usually have a lot of very complex individual objects in it. And the by the layer workflow in Krita allows you to organize it. So if I wanted to create a layer that is, is a square, create another paint layer, rename it to say, I don't know, circle. I'm 
I'm actually gonna rename the other layer, I can't forget that, to rect, it's not a split rectangle, it's not a split rectangle, name that one rectangle, go back to the, no, go back to the circle, well now you know a lot better which object is which, because we're, we're selecting, we have the circle layer selected, that's gonna move that, the rectangle layer is selected, that's gonna move the rectangle layer. It helps a really easy to make sure that you know which layer is which, so naming your layers is a good idea as well. But we're gonna go back to the single paint layer. It should also be mentioned that any tool you use over here, most of them, at the very least, are affected by tool options. So we have the select tool, uh, the, or the well, not really select tool, really the transform tool is selected. But if I go to the uh, rectangle uh, tool again, it will give me some options for fill. So we can go for like a background color. And if I go back to the color picker and go for like a green, actually, as long as this as black, I actually need to do this. There we go. So that's actually uh, filling in the outline, which is the background color. If I go back to the foreground color that and fills it back in with that color that's kind of an interesting little way to make it to uh, a shape with a bit of an outline uh, without having to go to the layer style panel first but experiment on your own by creating as many different designs and shapes and stuff like that as you want until you get something that you really find that works for where your brand um, that's personally what I personally do is I just just kind of create kind of kind of bull crap a whole bunch of shapes and then try and find something that I personally like until I find something that I personally like. So when I actually put it to use, it actually looks pretty good because I've have this like design philosophy down after a little bit. All right, as you've seen, I've created that uh, that shape we had before with the outline thing again, but with um, a circle. Um, so here's what we're gonna get now. Now it should be mentioned vector layers. For most purposes, you do not need to create everything on a vector layer. The normal paint layer that you can use, like normal, works just fine. But there are some programs out there that you can bring this logo into that work really well with vector images like after effects so you cannot convert a paint layer into a vector layer if you go to the paint layer and go down to convert you don't have the option to convert it to a paint layer this is transparent mask filter mask or file layer so in order to use vector layers you go down here to the plus icon here and there's an arrow right beside it you go click that and click add vector layer and you can just do basically the same thing that we were doing before create an image and now this particular shape that we had before is now a uh, vector image now keen-eyed people will notice something that I just did did you catch it I'm using the select shapes tool that tool normally doesn't do this can't do that normally with that tool. That's the, one of the cool things about using vector images in Krita and why creating them is a very good idea. It's because in paint layers, you can't do that. Nope, that's not the right freaking tool. I'm, I'm bad at this apparently. Yeah, you can't do that on a paint layer. It only works on vector layers. So creating as many objects on vector layers is a very good idea because you can use the select tool just like you would normally do any other tool, but also allows you to reshape it and stuff like that. Really, really cool. So before we finish off our initial sketch here by completing the inner part of the circle, I wanna uh, mention layer styles real quick. So layer styles work pretty much the same way that they do, um, or at least in fact layers in Affinity Design if you ever use that, um, where you got like drop shadows and stuff like that. Now what sets the uh, Creta's version of it apart is that it also allows you to use styles and blending options. Krita is really good at just data sets and stuff like that. That's actually a really nice, cool thing about Krita is that you can set, you can save a presets for almost pretty much anything in Krita. Um, it is as malleable as anything you can ever see. But for the purposes of this logo, we're gonna create a stroke. Um, I'm gonna create it as a color. Um, let's see here. That looks like a pretty nice state of green. Okay, cool. We're gonna turn opacity to 100%. We're create uh, make the uh, blend mode as normal because I don't know like how I, it defaults to multiply. Uh, can make the size a little smaller. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So um, blend modes are pretty interesting. Uh, blend modes are um, 
they have weird names. Um, a lot of these names kind of uh, reference the math that they're doing at the back end of the program, like difference. Um, not sure why it, it's like that. I've never really figured out why. Like multiply, it's it looks the way it does in multiply. Uh, normal is just standard math. It doesn't have any finagling in the back end. It's just normal, plain and simple. So we have something pretty nice going on right here, right now. It kind of reminds me of the Looney Tunes logo thing. You know that 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 thing that goes in like in segments towards a black pitch black darkness in the background. That's what it reminds me of. But you know. So to finish off our little logo here, we're going to create another vector layer. Um, so we're gonna go to the polyline shift tool or just the polyline tool. We're gonna go up to our tool options, at least tertiary tool options up here and we're gonna lower the pixel size. So I think, yeah, how does it look? That's a little big. I'm gonna lower that to three. I'm actually gonna change the color to white. Still a little big, so we're gonna lower that a couple more times to one pixel. Still too small. It's just trial and error. It's all part of the creative process. So we're gonna go down to two pixels. Perfect. So the polyline tool works really the same way that the polygon tool, the Bezier shift tool. It works for whatever reason. Krita has many tools for really the same action, but the polyline tool, it's it's pretty standard. So we're gonna just kind of bullshit some images and see if we can't create something that doesn't look at least half decent. And that's really part of the creative process is that you just kind of create something until you find something that, you know, overall works. And I experimented a little bit, uh, trying to see if I can come up with something that's pretty good. Um, it's not perfect. Um, the polyline tool can be a bit of a bit of a tool to use um, if you're not uh, not really careful. But I'm just trying to explain to you the pro basis of the program. Experiment on your own, practice on your own, you'll get better. Um, I just just play with the polyline tool a little bit. All I really did was just create a triangle circle circle shape. Can't speak and i duplicated it by going to right click on a, uh, on a layer and then duplicate or you can just do Control j and then moved it around a little bit to kind of combine it to make the overall shape pretty cool and uh you know add any little details as you see fit you know the little details matter um more than most people realize um as for exporting make sure that background layer is also turned off by the way we want that alpha background um i'm also going to group everything into its own group a you know, quick group where you can do control G so that when I open up the project again it doesn't uh, everything's all grouped together so I can kind of move it around and stuff like that um, so to export an, uh, an, a, a file go to file and go to save as we're gonna save this file as a craw file now craw files are just to create his own version of project files is what they are. So we're going to click save, save the project, but we're going to go back again to save as, and we're going to save this project again as a PNG image. Um, click that, uh, make sure nothing really ever needs to be uh, changed here unless you want to save as an HDR image, um, but most people don't use that. Click OK, and it's saved. And look, created a clean professional logo in Krita. Whoop de doo. But I think it looks pretty good. I think it looks you know, a little rough around the edges with the shape, but that's just the polyline tool for you. Um, with such limited options for basic shapes, you kind of got to work with, you know, do what you work with. You know, work with what you got. Tactics means doing what you can with what you have, you know, and stuff like that. But experiment a little bit, kind of get familiar with the program and stuff like that. Uh, learn a little bit more about it and uh, try to create some cool stuff.
Now, Creed is very Creed is very competent in what it does. It's very powerful, um, especially for something that's completely free. Um, so yeah, so I think that's gonna do it for this video. If you like this video and see what, want to see more for it, well, subscribe, like, comment, all the good stuff, you know, stuff like that. And if you like to see more for the channel, um, I post uh, uh, once a week, so stuff like that and stuff like that. If you also need your video edited, uh, I also have a video editing business. Um, go to my Shopify page and stuff like that and get your videos edited today. So thank you for joining me today, everyone. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.